I bought the cheapest iPhone 11. Released in the prehistoric era of 2019, this remains one of the best options for cell phones on the market. And there are a ton of reasons that I bought this and that you should also consider checking one out. The first reason today is look at that price. If you are looking at the big box stores, you can get a pre-owned copy for about $400 at Best Buy or Target. And surprisingly enough, you can find them for about 250 bucks on some smaller carrier plans. But if you wanted to get it unlocked, you could also get this bad boy for under $300 on places like Amazon. That's a ton of savings off of even the cheapest iPhone on today. Which if you don't know, because you don't obsess over Apple's website on a near weekly basis, help me. That is the iPhone SE. When it comes in at $429, it will have a better processor and maybe a technically better camera, but it will look and feel older to use compared to this phone, and this phone is actually about four years old. Okay, Gary, what do you actually get when you spend the money on the 11? Well, thank you, me. You'll get the A13 Bionic chip, which is only a couple of generations older than the current A15 found in the A14 standard lineup. You'll get 64 gigabytes of storage, a 6.1 inch liquid retina HD display, a few different color options, one of the first dual camera arrays on a phone, and the same operating system as the current gen iPhone. Phones. We will get more in depth on the features in a bit, but take a step back. Let's all, well, I can't take a step back or you won't hear me from the microphone, but let's take a metaphorical step back and see all the power and just the amount of phone that you can get for about 250 bucks. That's staggering. Yes, absolutely. There are some features that you will not get on the iPhone 11. You won't get cinematic mode, you won't get the new emergency features, and you won't be able to talk to satellites with this phone. But are you like 95% of people out there that were never planning on doing or using those things? Then why would you wanna spend four to five times the amount to get them? Bottom line, you wouldn't, and thankfully, you're learning through this video, you won't have to. About a year ago, we made a similar video about this iPhone 11, and the cheapest I could find it back then was 400-ish bucks. Being able to get this for $250 is absolutely a no-brainer, and really makes buying anything on the new side of the Apple phone system, it makes that really kind of hard. Unless you absolutely have to have the latest and greatest cutting edge tech, which is really only relevant to us YouTube tech nerds, most people I know still have phones from three to four years ago. The next reason to buy this phone is the display. It's actually really, really good. And that's a refrain that you'll probably hear several times today. You won't get the fast refresh rate of the 13 and 14 Pro Maxes with the iPhone 11, but you wouldn't get that on the 14 or 14 plus either. So here you are getting a very technically comparable phone. One of the things that matters most for me about the screen is actually being able to see it when I'm outside. And with its 625 nits of max brightness, you might have problems looking at the screen in a glare or if it's got direct sunlight on it. But besides that, I find it perfectly usable when I can and cannot control the light. This might be the one place where I think the 14 does hold the actual usable upper hand with its 800 nits of max brightness. But again, I'm not sure that I would want to spend so much more money when I could like hold my hand over the screen or walk in the shade to see it. Another reason to really consider this is the performance. Yes, it is kind of hard to drill down into what makes a phone's performance good. Is it bar chart figures showing bigger bars over time? Is it running enough benchmarks on the phones to see if I can get it warm enough to shut off? I don't think either of those are all that useful. I think a phone has enough power when I can watch movies, read email, send funny cat pictures, and maybe play a round or two of Alto's Odyssey in serious note. When going back to my phone to check the name of that game, I wasted 30 minutes playing it. I know it's older, but darn, that game is addicting. Yes, I could go into specifics about the six core CPU and the four core GPU inside of the SOC of this phone, but if you were looking at a four year old phone and you're looking for a cheap option, chances are you couldn't care less about what kind of specs are actually in the phone. I know I generally don't until I'm making these videos. The most important part about a phone's performance to me isn't how well it performs today, but how will it perform tomorrow and how long will it last and how many upgrades and updates will it get? While other brands are starting to push updates longer and longer, nobody really approaches Apple's level of support. iOS 16, the latest operating system, has support and compatibility all the way back to the iPhone 8, which was released back in 2017. So if we do a little bit of extrapolation, assuming this is the last year of support for iPhone 8, which I do not know, and maybe it'll go even longer, the iPhone 11 should still get two to three years of updates from today. So you could buy a phone that's four years old and still get more operating system and security patches than even the latest and greatest Android phones, barring a few sparingly small exceptions. I find that to be remarkable, and it really goes to show that buying these older iPhones makes a lot of sense because it's not like you're buying a cheap disposable phone that is obsolete the second you buy it. You have this, it will last a while. Mm. 
I love making these videos. All right, the next reason to continue buying the iPhone 11 was actually the reason I bought an iPhone 11 back in 2019, the cameras. Yes, I've really enjoyed Apple cameras over the past few years, but the cameras on the 11 are hands down my favorite. Now, I'm not saying they're better than the 14 to the 13s or anything that came after it, but they are my favorite because this was the phone. This iPhone 11 was the phone that fully changed my mind about phone cameras being primary cameras. On the back, you'll get a wide angle and ultra wide angle option, and these are pretty standard today, but back when the iPhone 11 came out, this was pretty darn new as far as iPhones went. Yes, I believe Samsung phones had ultra wide angle cameras longer, but I did say iPhones and not cell phones, so you can stop typing that angry comment. You're still gonna do it, I know. I think the cameras look great and take incredible pictures. And because this is still a small phone, it makes a fantastic family picture camera. But one of the main reasons why I like this so much is it has the first ultra wide angle selfie camera. Love them or hate them, but selfies are a huge part of modern family picture taking. I wasn't even actually, when I was writing the script out, I wasn't actually gonna mention this here because I don't even think there is a backlash against selfies anymore. I know when they first hit the scene, it was much like when vertical video started becoming popular. All of the purists turned their nose up, but it's been long enough now that selfies are just the way to do things. I think the majority of our family pictures are us crowding around in front of mine or my wife's front facing cell phone camera and snapping a pic. And this side tangent actually has a point because the iPhone 11 was the first selfie camera that really ticked all my boxes. In fact, this selfie camera is the one that made those boxes to be ticked in the future. At the time I had an iPhone XR and I was totally happy and I was kind of a camera snob, so I had no intention of letting selfies take over my life. But then I gave this a shot, my whole perspective has changed. Running a social media presence is so much easier when you've got lots of selfies, and darn it, I just love the selfies in the iPhone 11. Hands out, I love it, I love it. We could just call this video iPhone 11, Gary loves it. I think the battery life is also pretty good. It's not mind boggling like a Pro Max or even one of the newest iPhones, but it's good enough. It will get you through a full day of work and that's about all I ask for in a phone. You might have to charge it at the end of the day or throughout the day if you are a heavy power user, but that's a small price to pay for the small price you paid. Get it? I I tried to do a thing there. Apple says you'll get 17 hours of video playback time on here, but if you get a used phone, I imagine it will have some cycles already on that battery, and I wouldn't expect to get full lengths of charge out of it. It does look like you could pay $69 to Apple and get a battery swap. So you take that 250 bucks, you add 70 bucks on top of it, and you'll still be looking at a phone cheaper than most budget phones and cheaper than the cheapest new iPhone. I also think the build quality and the physical characteristics of this phone are a major reason to buy. This was back in the rounded edges epoch for iPhones. And while I do really like the current generation of phones, I like how they look, I like the angles, I don't hate this one either. And using this again over the past couple of days to reacquaint myself to this phone for this video, it's actually really comfortable to hold. Something about the rounded edges of the Apple cases for this, it just makes it a joy to use. Like it just fits in the hand so much better because of the way your fingers grip around the edges compared to the sharper edges of the new phone. And I think there has been enough time for the newness sheen of the square edged iPhones to kind of wear off. And I think I prefer a rounded edged phone more. I like the look of the right angles more, but it doesn't feel as nice in the hand. Plus the iPhone 11 is built like a tank. You'll get all the normal switches, you'll get the the notch instead of the dynamic island, you'll get wireless charging, you'll get basically everything that you would get from an iPhone today. One thing that I hate about recommending budget phones or cheap tech in general is that if you are buying new cheap tech, they, they have to make their profit somewhere and they will normally make that by skimping out on the materiel budget. While buying an older flagship iPhone means you'll get the full price for all the components. They did not skimp out on the internals of this and you'll get all of those components and all of the functions, you'll just get it for a lot less. Seriously. This phone does not feel cheap in the slightest. No kidding, four years later and the iPhone 11 is still a monster. It's got fantastic build quality, amazing cameras, a really good price, and it's overall a fantastic phone for the money. And if you need a new cheap option in 2023 for you or maybe your kids, which is why I started looking into it, this is absolutely the reason to get it. But what about you? If you were gonna recommend a budget phone for the new year, what would you suggest? Let us know in the comments below because I love talking about budget technology. And if you like this video, but you wanna check out a newer iPhone, click here to see how the iPhone 14 Plus stacks up. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.